Welcome everyone. I'm joined here by Joey Fischella, who is the lead developer of Flow. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thanks for having me. So this is a bit of a special episode for me because Flow was formerly known as Florin Coin. That's right. Now, anyone who's been watching my channel for a really long time will know that five years ago, I interviewed you at the New York Bitcoin Center for a Valentine's Day special, and we talked about Florin Coin. Are you selling Florin Coin here tonight? Uh, I am actually. That's sweet. But with Florin Coin, uh, the blockchain actually holds messages, mm -hmm. so you can send uh, a love message or something like that to someone you really like, and it'll be spread around the world to every computer that has a coin. Uh -huh. You'd been part of this coin where you could put basically messages mm -hmm. in the blockchain, and at the time you kind of marketed it as this like Valentine's Day, send a message to your yes. loved one, like the most geeky Valentine's Day gift ever. So if you're super geeky and super romantic, this is the perfect tool for you for Valentine's Day. But since then, Florin Coin transitioned into something very different and has been incredibly successful. So tell me a little bit about that transition. Yeah, so in the beginning, uh, it was a general purpose sort of messaging system where you could put any type of data in the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the first apps that we created uh, was that Valentine's Day app where you could put a, a little note for someone and it's forever in the blockchain. Those messages are still there. Because the blockchain means forever. Yeah, that's right, and it's immutable, it never changes. <laughs> Uh, so uh, since then, we've built some software on top of that capability, uh, and that software is being used by enterprises for uh, generally storing metadata uh, in the blockchain to have a decentralized index, kind of like a decentralized torrent tracker, where you store your files and your large data somewhere else, uh, and then the metadata where uh, you know, it identifies who created the content, uh, the tags for the content, general uh, information about that data, uh, so you can search for it, exists in the blockchain. Uh, so you have that decentralized record of where everything is uh, and also what it's about. Uh, and you can pull, up, pull that up from the blockchain whenever you need to. So that ability to store data in the blockchain, that has actually become really useful for certain companies. So talk me through some of the use cases that we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, so the biggest use case is uh, to store a record of where to find some content. Uh, and you can use that for almost anything. Uh, at the moment, we're using it for Caltech, uh, and they co-wrote a paper with us. Uh, yeah, we, we wrote a paper about open scientific research uh, and open contributions to scientific research. So they have a lot of microscope data sets, which is basically images of cells and bacteria under a microscope. Uh, and those are being stored on an IPFS server, uh, and a network of IPFS servers, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the Flow blockchain, they store the IPFS hash, uh, the date that the um, the image was created, uh, and they also store uh, some information about like the name of the bacteria and things like that on the blockchain. So if you're searching for it, you can find it very easily. Huh. And why is that more helpful for them than using a different kind of a database? So the reasoning behind it was that we didn't want Caltech to own that data. Uh, the researchers at Caltech thought, we want the public to own this data because then someone else can very easily find our work. Uh, and maybe cure a disease based on it or get a better understanding of cell biology based on this data. And the best way to do that is to make it open source right. and to even improve upon that, uh, you can put it in a decentralized network so Caltech doesn't have the central repository of data. Uh, now anyone with another university or an enthusiast can join in on the network uh, and spread that data everywhere. And outside of universities, there are other use cases as well. You've got some really large companies working with your, uh, your product. That's right. So Overstock.com has two subsidiaries. One of them is T0 and the other is Medici. Uh, and with T0, they're putting uh, records of trades and who owns what uh, stocks and security tokens on the Flow blockchain. And the purpose is they can identify who owns what shares. So if anyone's trying to short sell, they can't do what's called the naked short sell, where they short sell stock without actually owning it. Right. Uh, using the blockchain, you can verify that those shares are actually owned by the user. Uh, and in addition, Medici Land Governance is using Flow to create an index of public land data. So if you own land or you own a house or any real estate or something like that, uh, that data is going to be on the blockchain and verifiable. So it kind of cuts out corruption. And it, you know, if whenever there's some uh, files in a cabinet that are stored in a you know government office, it's 
uh, central point of failure, let's say. I feel like we've been talking about this use case for a really long time and I hadn't really seen it come into fruition. We've been saying, oh, well, blockchain tech, yeah, it could be used theoretically for keeping records outside of the hands of a corrupt government, you know, making things that are immutable, all those things. Like outside of money itself, it could be used for other things. But you guys are actually implementing that behind the scenes and we're not really hearing much about it, but it's moving ahead in great strides. Yeah, uh, you know, it takes a little while to change policy, uh, but we did work with the Wyoming legislator and we're getting it implemented in Teton County in Wyoming. Did you ever expect that when you were working with Florin Coin at the Bitcoin Center years ago, that it would turn into something this and you'd be partnering with Caltech? Absolutely not. Actually, the first use case for Flow was supposed to be for a decentralized Twitter. Uh, the messaging system had a 140 character limit, which was the same as Twitter at the time. Hmm. Uh, but since then, Twitter's actually increased to 280 characters. Uh, we've increased to over a kilobyte of data, which is around 1,040 bytes. Uh, wow. So now we use those bytes to store metadata, and uh, enterprise partners have uh, kind of caught on to this idea, and they're using our software. That's really, really cool. It's funny because at the time when we did our first interview, it was sort of the era of shit coins. You know, there were just, um, there, everyone was creating a coin. I thought about creating a coin, you know, and there were just lots of projects flying around. And I think it's really impressive to see a project come out of that era that's actually lasted. You guys clearly yeah. created a, a valuable product that people have sought out because it's very useful for their businesses. I think that's just a tremendous, achievement. We've been working on it for almost six years now uh, and originally uh, the creator you know was anonymous it kind of just dropped it on Bitcoin talk uh, and the community gathered around and figured out what to do with it mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't really much uh, of a direction to begin with uh, and it was general enough that we could come up with something that worked for uh, people that were interested in the decentralized nature of data. Awesome and where do you think it's gonna go next? So we're working with getting uh, other universities to implement the same database that Caltech did. Uh, we're also working with some publishing companies to uh, sign and hash uh, their publications mm -hmm. uh, in the blockchain so that you know, it kind of combats fake news a little bit because uh, they can wow. prove that they wrote something at a certain time. Uh, no one can backdate things. or There's also non-repudiation, which means you can't take back something that you already said. Uh -huh. uh, so there are some elements to it that are uh, helpful for publishing as well. I imagine. Well, when we chatted the first time, you were saying that people were buying Florin coin. So hopefully they've, uh, they've held on to that Florin coin. Yeah, well, Flow is actually one of the oldest 10 coins that still exist. Wow. So we were probably, I think, coin like number 27. Uh, but oh, more than half of them have uh, disappeared. Uh, the blockchains have stopped or they're not listed on an exchange. Developers haven't updated them. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, almost, you know, it's just like 90% of businesses fail. Yeah, uh, I think 90% right. of shitcoins fail. And so. you weren't one of them. So well done. Uh, it's really awesome to see you still here. It's really awesome for me to have uh, been able to follow your journey as well, to be able to have documented it at the start and you're wandering around the Bitcoin set like, ah, I've got Florin coin and now look where everything is. So that's awesome. I really appreciate you chatting with me today. Absolutely. No problem.